In this lesson, we're going to learn how to visualize chemical bonds. You might remember from our last lesson, we focused on drawing Lewis structures, which are two-dimensional, uh, and they're, they're drawn on a piece of paper or on a screen. Well, today we're going to, to start to learn about how these chemical bonds uh, are actually three-dimensional structures and what they really look like. And so let's take a look at the three main types of bonds you can have. You can have single bonds, double bonds, and sometimes you can even have triple bonds. And so here's an example. Here are three examples, in fact. We have uh, the fluorine-fluorine single bond. Now, if you were to look at that, what you would most likely find is there's an atom of fluorine, and of course another atom of fluorine, and the two electrons that participate in that single bond would be shared directly in between those two atoms, kind of like this. What's happening is their, uh, their s orbitals are basically overlapping, and so that uh, bond is formed directly in between those two atoms. Now, in a double bond, things are a little bit different, because if we imagine the, the two oxygen atoms here, we have these two oxygen atoms. This time, though, we have to have two bonds somewhere uh, in between those two atoms. And so the first bond is going to be shared directly in between those two atoms, just like it was in the fluorine-fluorine single bond. But there's another bond. This is a double bond. And so the second bond has to be somewhere else. There's really no more room for a second bond right in that same spot. So what's going to happen is these bonds are, or this second bond, is going to have to be what we might describe as looped. And so it's basically uh, going to be doing something like this. Now, from a chemical point of view, what's happening is in the first bond, we're sharing or overlapping s orbitals, just like we had up here. But in the second bond, uh, we're overlapping p orbitals. And so that's what it looks like. It would be kind of looped. Well, in a triple bond, we need even more space. You have these two nitrogen atoms, and we have to have somehow space for three bonds. And so the first bond is going to be right between the two atoms, just like it was for the other two. And that results from the, the overlapping of, of the s orbital. But now we have to have two more bonds. Now, the, the second bond is going to be just like the one in oxygen, uh, the oxygen-oxygen bond up there, where it's looped, just like the other one was, where we have the p bond, or the p orbitals overlapping. But the third bond is also going to be looped. And so this is hard to draw on a two-dimensional surface, but if you can imagine this looped, this looped bond coming out of the board, or out of the screen, like this. It's coming out at you in that third dimension. And that's also a result of p orbitals overlapping. And so what we have here is a single bond that has an overlapping s orbital. And we call that particular type of bond not an s bond, but we call it a sigma bond. And so we use, sometimes we write it out as sigma, but more commonly we use the Greek letter sigma that looks kind of like a cursive O. Now, in a double bond, we have one of those s uh, orbital overlaps, so we call that sigma. But we also have a p orbital overlap, and we call that a pi bond. And most of you know that the Greek letter pi looks something like that. In a triple bond, we have one of those s overlaps, we call that sigma. But do you notice how many p overlaps we have? It's not just one. We have two. And so we actually have two pi bonds. And this is basically the case for all single, double, and triple bonds. And so if we want to summarize this, we can say that, that all single bonds are composed of one sigma bond. That's the case for every single bond that you'll ever encounter. All double bonds are composed of one sigma bond and one pi bond. And all 
triple bonds are composed of one sigma bond and two pi bonds. That's the key information. That's what you need to know in order to, to answer the questions on the assignment and later on the test. Now let's do some practice here. Let's say we have a, a molecule that's uh, fairly complex. Now this is not the most complex of molecules. This is a molecule of what's called ethene. This is a, a very simple organic molecule. And the question is, how many sigma and pi bonds do we have here? Well, like we learned before, every single bond is a sigma bond. So I'm going to put a sigma next to every single bond there. And we also learned that every double bond has one sigma and one pi. So I'm going to label those. And now we just add them up. And I count up five sigma bonds and one pi bond in this molecule. Now let's try one more example that's a little bit more complex. In fact, it's quite a bit more complex. How many sigma and pi bonds are in this particular molecule? Well, it's done the same way. We have to isolate the, the singles and we call all the single bonds sigma bonds. So I'm going to label all the single bonds with a sigma. All the double bonds are one sigma and one pi. So I'm going to label those. Those are all the double bonds. Now we have one triple bond in here, and the triple bond is a sigma and two pi. So I'm going to label that as well. And so now we just add up the sigmas and the pi. So sigma, I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it looks like we have 10 sigma bonds in this molecule. And I'm also counting 4 pi bonds. And so at this point, you should be able to count sigma and pi bonds in any molecule that you could be given.